nobody, no matter how rich or how powerful you are, no one is above the law. Beautiful, nice. Uh, what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll call you, we'll call you, and that's <laughs> it. So. <laughs> And welcome to the sit down where we have conversations with creators from across this beautiful motherland of ours. My name is Marco Mboye, a filmmaker and an all round story lover. And today we are sitting down with Paul Ogola, who is one of the best actors in Kenya. He has featured in international and local films such as Nairobi Half Life, Sense 8, and the just concluded first season of Crime and Justice. Your boys say you're the best in the business? Is yeah. it just the car you're after? Yes. Okay, punt. Whatever. So I want to say thank you so much for joining us again for the sit-down. And I think the place to start off is through your all this vast experience from drama, from high school, to theatre, to cinema. I guess the, the most basic question is, who is an actor? An actor is a, is a storyteller, basically. I mean, that's that's the most definition that I'd love people, uh, my colleagues to embrace. An actor is a storyteller, that's it. All these other technical definitions and all that they, they can find it in the internet but from the my you know, understanding an actor is a storyteller when when you're coming as a in an audition you know i mean actors do so many auditions mm. and i'm sure there's one or two actors who'd say i've done all these auditions probably they're in their 50th never been selected is there a skill set that someone needs to come with when they're about to do a, an audition what for you how do you prep for one and how do you tackle one i always go in with uh i always go in with the attitude that you know what these these casting directors or directors are here to look for somebody who will do the job you know they're here to look for somebody not somebody who 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 will try but somebody who will do the job for the longest time uh the mistake i used to ha i used to make was thinking that a uh, casting director uh, director would spot a potential and uh, and start <laughs> pick pick somebody who who has a potential and tell themselves that you know we can work with these as as they grow i don't think so uh, that really never got me these opportunities but once i changed my mindset on these people are business people number one they're business people and they're looking for uh, somebody who can execute uh, a character or a role as described by whatever uh, uh, by, by, by the writers or, or the directors this is the person they're looking for if you can execute then you're the person they'll go for so that means if you have that attitude then it means you'll come prepared because that one will inform how you prepare yourself as an artist Coming, uh, coming to the auditions on time, having your uh, having your, um, your your lines, having yourself uh, uh, in in character, and that means you know if you look the character, it's always best if you even dress the character. That's that's that uh, so that the the casting director, the director can easily spot that you know what you you have it you have it the character that you are reading about you've dressed him you look him you sound like him and you even almost talk like him all this is a work of preparation and it starts it starts with the uh, with the attitude that i am uh, um i'm going out there i'm going out there to show these people that i am the one you're looking for and when you when you look at uh, when you're given a sign or you're not given um, a piece of a scene that you're supposed to perform. I mean, you don't have the larger story. You don't know where your character came from. You don't know where he's going. You only have a moment in time. Yes. How do you internalize that enough to be able to um, anticipate or interpret who this character might be? 
one uh, I'm lucky to have been one of the students who uh, in a certain master class in uh, LA our teacher um, our teacher then was uh, her name is Deborah Akila and she's a uh, casting director for Shoshank Redemption part of casting director uh, part of casting director for La La Land and 192 other films this is what she told us this particular master class she was she was teaching us about scene study how to study a scene that in uh, just the way you've described it somebody plucks a paper and gives you a particular scene and tells you this is the this is a particular scene that uh, you need to act out with your partner and we need to believe your performance so how do you go about that how you go about that is you read the text you understand and now you ask yourself one question what's the time in this particular place a uh, piece what's where is the place what was happening in what time of this piece so in this particular play it's called the pride the uh, we uh, we were given first the whole play i read the whole play then we were to pick a, a, a scene and we picked that scene and um, so now uh, herself she pretty much read the play long many years ago but mm-hmm. now we, she was directing us according to what was happening in this particular place and what was the environment in this particular place time and uh, and this uh, um, and and the place so we were to, uh, i was sent back to go google about the street which was uh, still there the street which was there from 1955 mm-hmm. to start with how it looked like during the summer which was that time from that piece what kind of what kind of uh, buildings were around that place were they bricks were they uh timber were they uh, were they were they, were they uh, was the park still there such kind of things so that it all these details affect our performance because if the two character were in a park and they spotted a seat you know the the, the seats that are always mm-hmm. placed in later that was boxing yes the, the the next thing for them would be like we've met and uh, let's take a seat when they sit when they see uh, when they take this particular seat that's surrounded by flowers or maybe in a bare green land or maybe in a very concrete place it pretty much uh, defines how they behave you get what i'm saying mm-hmm. the, mm-hmm. the environment and time the political the, the pol- political uh, environment by then the social environment by then pretty much uh, informs how they behave so these two happened to be gay mm. in 1955 in london so it means the two of them if they were going to sit on this particular seat mm. then they must not they must not be uh, they must not suggest to the public that these yeah. are an awkward sitting so how would they behave mm. so you see such kind of an such kind of information really informs you on how this how we play out this scene. Mm-hmm. so and so in an audition uh, uh, when you're given when you're given a side it's very important for you to if you don't have resources from the uh, um, information as a resource from them then it's good for you to build one it's mm-hmm. it's better for you to, to build one so that you have you have a place to withdraw emotions or, or, or movements from or even energies from you can't portray something you don't have and you can't act out emotions like right now i can't tell you act uh, show me happiness you have to think about something happy you have to something very exciting that happened in your life you have to bring it close and then you can withdraw from that particular situation that's the work before the work now you have to build a world that uh maybe you are not given but they expect you to show us something believable about this side that we gave you building a world that uh, that dictates um, the happenings in the particular side or scene you're given 
is 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 the best bet I give any artist in uh, uh, for these auditions. But even in my darkest moment, I knew it was wrong to take a life. There are compelling reasons to deny the defendant bail. You can't charge her with murder. What did you have me do? She has her whole life ahead of her. What, what's the story? How did you end up on crime and justice before you jump into the acting and the prosecutor role and everything juicy about it? Conditions. The casting director, the beautiful and amazing uh, Lorella Joey, called me and I mean uh, for the first round of auditions which was kind of closed uh, she called me to audition for the pathologist no. which is not uh, which uh, which was uh, ended up being played by Brian Ogola no. uh, I went in for auditions for the pathologist and I pretty much didn't look the role so um, after uh, after that round of auditions the second round of auditions uh, uh, now it became a uh, an open casting and um, uh, the, the the instructions were that uh, you come in with a, you come in with a, with a monologue um, yeah. a poem, uh, you perform the monologue and that would be your audition so i went in with the monologue uh, did my audition and uh, when i after like some days mm -hmm. i was informed that i should read try and read for a guy called uh, Sokoro prosecutor called Sokoro. So when I, I, I read the character Bible for Sokoro, I, I saw that, that, that the guy was 50 years old. <laughs> oh, I was 50 years old. <laughs> and and, uh, and the a prosecutor in the show. And he's, he's playing a prime, um, one of the primary roles in the show, now on the legal side of the show. So read the first episode. 55 pages and then i was told to uh study seeing some scenes and uh were well, uh, going for audition so i went in for the audition of the first time i met the i met the director mr adam and um did my audition uh he he, he recorded it and he was like uh he, he told us uh, yeah, beautiful nice uh, so what we'll do is uh uh we'll call you we'll call you and that's it. So, <laughs> well, okay, that was it. So I went in. I went in with. Um, I knew I wouldn't. I, I, I don't look fifty. I knew I yeah. wouldn't look fifty. So, told myself, you know what? Uh, what I'll do. What I'm going to bank up is. Um, I'm going to use the times we are in right now. We are in. Uh, mm. We are in a crisis in terms of uh, justice and, you know, just yeah. social justice, uh, political justice, or oh, life is just not fair right now. And it mm -hmm. needs somebody to speak to, uh, to speak truth to, uh, to people or even power. And, and that, that person, that courageous voice is needed. And, 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 and according to this role, it feels like this is the guy this is the this is the guy or the uh, or the writers themselves pretty much was were basing their voice as human beings on uh, Sokoro when he speaks about um, the kind of politicians we end up with in that particular um, uh, episode mm -hmm. so I I, I, I I I specifically chose her voice his voice and said this is what I'm going to walk into the auditions with. Yes, I'll dress up. I'll dress up the character. I'll look the character. I'll try and look the character. But his voice and his energies and his conviction, his compassionate anger against injustice. That's what I'm going to use, and base it with today's times. I'm going to use that voice to speak as Sokoro. And that's that's mm -hmm. how I went in. Uh, that's how I went in um, uh, to the auditions and. That's the person I voice, and they you know, after after a month of them just continuing to cast, I was confirmed for the role. And you just finished the full season. What 
what do you feel has been the learning curve for you on this particular project? What do you think you've been able to learn or grow in as an actor? This is the first role that I felt like, you know what, I'm implementing, implementing something that uh, I was taught. Um, it, it was well written, guiding, uh, uh, the character was well written and, uh, and it guided me to uh, the side of storytelling that really, really is important to viewers and uh, anyone who'd be interested to watch um, this series. Crime and Justice gave me that challenge of, you know, diving into this very different character and trying to trying to understand his world and, and speaking some things that maybe Kenyans have in their heads but don't feel afraid to speak. But I have the opportunity uh, to, to uh, and the platform to speak and uh, let them uh, let, let them judge if we really uh, talked for them or or um, they don't they they, they 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 believe we talked for them. Mm. And I guess just one of the last questions on this is: I'm assuming you've never been a prosecutor before <laughs> in any other role. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a language, there's a, a whole life mm. that how do you become, how do you embody something, especially for this role, how did you embody the idea of becoming a prosecutor? What did you have to do to be able to fully um, encapsulate that character? I, I had to research, I had to study videos, I had to study um, some cases, I had to study characters. I had to study people like uh, the DPP, uh, Mr. Nordin Haji. What's his uh, what's his uh, objective uh, with his job right now? D does he really want justice, or or is just there as a you know as a puppet? And you know, it, I had to study all these people. <laughs> and there's uh, the resources that I, I got from the uh, ODPP um, office of the. Uh, 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 prosecutors that uh, their videos on Facebook that I had to like just watch when it uh, when I was about to perform for episode two so that I get mm. to understand so that I get to understand why um, Foy or, or, or Hema had to had to be convicted as a child and not uh, and not go the audience way, the way they feel like, uh, why did the prosecutor uh, find her guilty, yet she's a child who was once uh, uh, wronged by the father, so maybe she had a trigger, blah, blah, blah. Why not? You see, all these all these are thoughts that Paul Ogola has. All these are thoughts that Paul Ogola as a person has. But now Sokoro, as a legal man, he has to, he has to, he has to come from a, a legal-based place for him to take the stance he took. Then, from from the studies I had, I realized that kids, kids can be prosecuted too, but from a certain cap of age. And the cases can go either sides. They can either be channeled to the system or they can either be diverted through another path called diversion. So for diversion, uh, only means that you don't have to go to jail. You can be sent uh, to the rehabilitation, uh, depending on the nature of your case. Kids who are like who are of Rehema's age, which was 17, uh, have two ways they, all, they always uh, interact with the law. There's child in conflict with the law, and then there's child in contact with the law. In Rahema's case, she had both of them, but one was never one was never reported. When she uh, when she was abused by her father, if the mother or anyone else or even herself, of which as a child is heard, if she uh, had uh, reported the case, then my office would be like uh, my office would uh, take would have charged uh, the father for for whatever happened. Now that situation is when a child is in contact is in contact with the law because the child is a victim a child who is in conflict with the law is a child who has committed a uh, crime and that's what that's what uh, rehema uh, did that 
the only time she ended up in this uh, uh, in the uh, in the system was when she was reported of murder and when I, when mm. I know when a child is uh, below 17 is uh, uh, below 17 and above 12 is reported for such kind of cases they they have to be prosecuted and for such kind of a crime this child uh, uh, most probably end up going to the system which is now you know being jailed in juvenile and all that but if they can appeal mm. with the with the initial with the initial evil that happened or the initial crime that happened then her sentence could change i mean they they, they, they can decide to to say you know what yeah the kid um, this is what happened initially and uh, her, uh the murder wasn't intentional it was an act of temporary insanity now it makes sense then the kid uh, now the kid doesn't have to go through the system the kid has to be taken through um, diversion which is now uh, through rehabilitations and uh, the, the um, probations and all that stuff so mm. it's i had to i had to learn them so that i can be uh, as a as a as a as a player i can be confident in what i'm saying and later on when somebody asks me i can just say i, I can explain myself <laughs> <laughs> with the few resources that i have <laughs> in terms of you know trying to uh, understand who Sokoro is and his environment and uh, and uh, what his mandate is you, I, I had to study this all so that uh, for me to be able to simulate it when that when the time came mm-hmm. uh, and from the inside that's what i got not from the outside you know from the floors and trying to trying to uh, gain myself a little bit of weight so that i don't look young and and having bigger coats wearing bigger coats than my defense you know, side who always looked sharp and well fit all that all that was pretty much informed by you know trying to get a certain a certain look all right thank you so much for taking your time for we'll coming to the sit down sharing your knowledge and acting talk about your story all right so we appreciate you thank you for taking your time all right thanks so much all right good day, good day. thank you for watching see you on the next one